The Sound of One Fork by Minnie Bruce Pratt. Through the window screen, I can see an angle of gray roof and the silence that spreads in the branches of the pecan tree as the sun goes down. I'm waiting for a lover. I'm alone in a solitude that vibrates like the cicada in hot mid-morning, that waits like the lobed sassafras leaf just before its dark green turns into red, that waits like the honeybee in the mouth of the purple lobelia. While I wait, I can hear the random clink of one fork against the plate. The woman next door is eating supper, alone. She is 60, perhaps, and for many years has eaten by herself the tomatoes, the corn, and okra that she grows in her backyard garden. Her small metallic sound persists, as quiet almost as the windless silence persists like the steady random click of a red bird cracking a few more seeds before the sun gets too low. She does not hurry. She does not linger. Her young neighbors think that she is lonely, but I know what sufficiency she may possess. I know it can be gathered from year to year, gathered from what is near to hand, as I do elderberries that bend in damp thickets by the road, gathered and preserved, jars and jars shining, in rows of claret red, made at times with help, a friend or a lover, but consumed long after, long after they are gone and I sit alone at the kitchen table. And when I sit in the last heat of Sunday, Afternoons on the porch steps in the acid breath of the boxwoods. I also know desolation. The week is over, the coming night will not lift. I am exhausted from making each day. My family, my children live in other states. The women I love in other towns. I would rather be here than with them in the old ways. But when all that's left of the sun sets, is the red reflection underneath the clouds. When I get up and come in to fix supper, in the darkened kitchen, I am often lonely for them. In the morning and the evening, we are by ourselves, the woman next door and I. Still we persist. I open the drawer to get out the silverware. She goes to her garden to pull weeds and pick the crookneck squash that grows yellow with late summer. I walk down to the pond in the morning to watch and wait for the blue heron who comes at first light to feed on minrows that swim through her shadow in the water. She stays until the day grows so bright that she cannot endure it and leaves with her hunger unsatisfied. She bows her wings and slowly lifts into flight, gray and slate blue against the paler sky. I know she will come back. I see the light create a rusted curve of land on the further bank, where the wild rice bends heavy and ripe under the first black birds. I know she will come back. I see the light curve in the fall and rise of her wings.